So today we're going to talk about something a little bit different than what we've talked about in many of the previous episodes because we have up until now just sort of focused on how exactly does object oriented PHP actually function, you know, what sort of methods do we have, what sort of classes do we have, um, but we haven't really talked about how to actually use it in certain scenarios that we might actually use inside a real website. So in this episode here, we're going to learn how to connect to a database using PDO. And we're going to be connecting to a MySQL database. And just a few things before we get started here, because I get a lot of confusion when I say MySQL. It's very important for me to point out that a MySQL database is not the same thing as using MySQL statements inside your code. I am quite aware that you have to use PDO or MySQL I, which is the new updated version of MySQL, by the way. So don't worry, we're going to be using a MySQL database, but it's not the same thing as using MySQL inside your code. And again, it's just to be clear, because I get a lot of people yelling at me if I don't say this, that MySQL databases is a different thing. So it's very important to mention at the beginning of this episode, that we will be using a MySQL database throughout this course here. And we will be using PDO in order to connect to our database. Uh, it's something that a lot of people requested me to do. A lot of people say that PDO is better than MySQL I that can be argued a little bit. There's pros and cons for using MySQL I and there's pros and cons for using PDO. I will leave a link in the description for a article that sort of explains the differences. Um, so, you know, just go ahead and read up on that if you want to know the specifics with the differences. Just know that we're going to be using PDO in order to actually connect to our databases and do anything database related in this course here. So, actually getting started on what we were supposed to be doing. Um, you can see that right in front of me here, I have a a uh, basic index page. I have nothing inside of it that is very unique other than just the standard HTML. Uh, I do also have a included file at the top here, which is just my class outer load file. If you don't know what a outer load file is, uh, go ahead and watch my episode on it. I will also link that in the description or you can just sort of jump back in the course a little bit. Essentially, this script here will outer load any sort of classes that we have that we need to use when we call on them and instantiate them. It's a very cool little function there. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to start our connection to our database. And that's all we're going to do in this episode here. Then in the next episode, we're going to start to actually mess around with the database using PDO and classes. So inside my classes folder, um, because inside my root folder, I have two folders, I have a classes folder, and I have a includes folder, it's very important to note the differences here, include folders or the include folder has documents inside of it, that are not classes, but instead are just pure PHP pages that we might use at some point inside our website. For example, if I submit a form, I need to go to a PHP document in order to do something with the data from the form, that will be an include file. But any sort of files that has classes inside of it are going to go inside my classes folder. So going inside my classes folder, I'm going to go ahead and create a new file. So I'm going to go ahead and say new file. And I'm going to go ahead and call this one dbh.class.php. And again, because I will get uh, questions about this in the comment section. When I say that I'm going to call it dot class dot PHP, it's just a naming convention. Okay, it doesn't do anything. You could also if you wanted to just go ahead and write dbh dot PHP if you wanted to do that. But because I have a naming convention of making sure that I can tell the differences between my files, I decided to call mine dot class dot PHP. It's just easier for me to figure things out then. So after creating this document, we're going to create the actual DBH class that we're going to be using to connect to our database. Now, just one more thing, when using a class auto load function, like we're doing right now, it's very important when we name our classes, that we name them the same way as we call the document files. Otherwise, you will get an error message because your auto load function can't figure out where is the class that is getting instantiated. So it's very important that if you called your document dbh, blah, 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 that you call your class dbh. So just something worth noting there. I will mention it again in the next episode once we create classes that has a little bit more of a complicated name. So just, just so you know that, okay? Um, so in here, I'm gonna go ahead and start up my PHP code. Just gonna go ahead and close off my PHP closing tags because that is better if you don't want to get something bad happening inside your code. If you leave something, uh, some white space after PHP code, 
it can mess things up. So make sure you don't have a closing tag. Um, so in here, I'm going to create a class and I'm going to call this one DBH uh, with capitalized, by the way, because that is the convention when it comes to naming classes. And we're just gonna go ahead and open up the class here. Now inside the class, we're gonna add a few different things. The first thing we're going to add is going to be some private properties because since this is database information, I would like to keep this private so only this class here has access to the, to the information. So I'm going to say we have a private and I'm going to call this, uh, this property a uh, host and I'm going to set equal to my host name. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this Paste it down three more times because we need four pieces of information. The next one is going to be called user, which is the username for the connection you have to your server. The next one is going to be the password to your server. So PWD, I'm just gonna go ahead and call it here. And the last one is going to be the database name. So DB, and then a capitalized N, name. So now that we have this, we need to start filling in the information. In the first one, I want to simply call this one localhost because I'm using a local host on my computer, which is XAMPP. So I'm just gonna go ahead and call this one localhost. If you're using a online website with an online server, with an online database and all that, then of course you need to change these informations in here. If you're using another software than me, cause I'm using XAMPP, I need to put certain parameters inside my username and inside my password. If you're using MAMP, it might be a little bit different. So if I go inside my username, I'm gonna go ahead and call this one root. That is going to be the default one for all XAMPP installations. If you change yours at some point, you need to put in something else. The password is going to be empty because I did not set a password for my local database or my local server connection. And then inside the database name, I did actually went ahead and called something uh, OOP PHP uh, 16, because this is the lesson number 16, so this is going to be uh, number 16. If you created a database at some point that has a different name, just go ahead and change the name of it. Doesn't matter if you name it the same as me. Uh, just know that this is the name of your database at some point. Now, we're not gonna be creating a database in this episode because we're not gonna be doing anything with the database, but we will do it in the next episode. So just, if you don't know what you're gonna call your database, just, you know, write whatever for now. It's just a placeholder. So after this, we're gonna go ahead and create a function. Oh, well, a method, because we're inside a class. And this method here is going to be a protected method because this is going to be containing our connection to the actual database. And we're going to be using this information up here in order to connect to the database. So I'm going to create a, a protected method. And I'm going to call this one uh, connect. Inside this one, we need to set a few different parameters. First, we need to set something called a DSN, which stands for data source name. And that is just simply going to describe what exact type of uh, database we're going to be using. We're going to be describing what sort of host we're gonna be using, and we're going to be describing what the database name is that we're going to be using in this episode here, or well, on this website here. So we're going to write a variable, and we're gonna call it DSN gonna set equal to, and then we're gonna go ahead and write single quotes. And we're gonna say, well, first of all, we're using a MySQL database. Again, like I mentioned in the first part of the episode, it's not that we're using MySQL statements, we're using a MySQL database. Just so we know that there's a difference there. So we're using a MySQL database type, and we're going to set a host equal to, and then we want to add one of these parameters up here, which in this case is going to be the host. So I'm just simply going to add my host down here, like so. Then I'm going to add something else because we need to continue what we're doing here. Uh, then we need to close off this first host statement inside our string. So we're gonna say semicolon, and then we're gonna add a database name. So db name is going to be equal to, and then we're going to do the exact same thing. So we're gonna go ahead and add our database name, which is up here and close it. Now, something that we need to change here though, because remember, we're inside a class, which means that we can't just refer to our properties like this. We do actually need to say, well, we're inside this class and we need to point to the host property. So this is how we need to do it. So just gonna go ahead and copy paste this a couple of times. There we go. So now it looks like this, okay? 
Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and add a PDO connection or create a new PDO connection. Um, it is possible just to write all of this. We just wrote it directly inside the PDO connection. But because I like to put things in variables, I think the DSN should just be a variable for itself. So down here, we're going to create a PDO variable. And the first thing we need to declare is that we're going to create a new PDO connection. So we're going to say new PDO parentheses. And inside the parentheses, the first thing we're going to be adding is the DSN connection or the, the DSN information that we have up here. So we're going to say DSN or variable DSN, comma. Then we need to add in our username and our password. So we need to do the exact same thing as we did over here, but we just need to point to our username and we need to point to our password, so PWD. After this, we can do something that is optional. Uh, because at some point inside our code, we're going to be fetching data and we're going to be, you know, just in general interacting with the database. And we need to decide how we want to pull out data from the database. And there is a little bit of, I don't know what to call it, like a uh, parameter that we need to insert inside our connections to the database when we need to interact with it and pull out data. And we can actually set a default attribute for like how we want to pull out the data. So we don't have to define it again and again and again and again throughout our code. So we can set a optional attribute here, which I'm going to do. So I'm going to say we have this PDO connection and I'm gonna to point to a method called set attribute. And inside of here, I want to say that I want to set a PDO attribute and I want to refer to the attribute called attr underscore default underscore fetch mode like so. And then the next thing we need to do is actually set the fetch mode that we want to fetch the data from the database. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to say PDO colon colon. And then we want to set it to the, the fetch mode we want to, to be getting things from the database, which in this case is going to be fetch a sock. You could also set this one to fetch objects instead if you wanted to. But in this case here, I think that we'll be most of the time getting associative arrays that we can then use to spit out data inside our browser. So we're just gonna set the default one to fetch a sock, which I think is a lot easier. Uh, the last thing we need to do is we need to actually return this connection here. So we're gonna go down here and say we want to return our PDO connection. So what we need to do now in the future is whenever we need to actually use this connection here, we just need to create a new class and we need to extend that class to this DBH connection or to this uh, DBH class here. And from there, we can just go ahead and refer to the uh, connect method we have inside our database class. And that way we will then, you know, get our connection returned. So this is a really simple way to set up a database connection when it comes to PDO inside object oriented PHP. So in the next episode, we're gonna talk a little bit about how to actually start doing things with a database using PDO and actually fetching things. We'll learn how to insert things. It, you know, it's a lot of the same thing. So if you know how to select something from a database, you will also know how to insert stuff into a database. Well, we will talk about both of those just so you know that we're not gonna go through a complete, you know, how to update the database, how to, you know, do various things, how to drop tables from a database, um, because it is pretty much the same as just regular PHP. You just need to change the SQL statement in there. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you in the next one.